Welcome to About the Winelands. In this show, we'll be chatting to leaders, influencers, wine producers, restaurants, winelands businesses, and other role players. Tune in every Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday for our latest episodes. You will find us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram TV, Google Podcast, Apple Podcast, and Spotify. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to About the Winelands. Today, I'm speaking to the Brain Steenkamp. The Brain is the owner of Friesland Wines in Stellenbosch. Hi, the Brain, how are you? Hi, Will. Yeah, great talking to you. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Well, welcome to About the Winelands. Our listeners will be very interested, um, you know, to hear your story. And um, can we kick off with that? Can you tell us a bit about yourself and um, how you became involved in the wine industry? Thank you. Yes, so uh, I grew up as a as fourth generation on um, our Stinkham family farms. Uh, that's in the Bottleray Hills outside of Stellenbosch. So we've got two family pieces of land, Groenland and Friesland, and they are adjacent. So I grew up there and then initially I wanted to be a lawyer, so I qualified as an attorney. Um, and I did my master's in trade law and I decided I'd rather go into wine. So I started working for the Stel. I was there for nine years, uh, four years in London, uh, looking after the European wine business, and I met my wife there. Also did my Cape Wine Masters, and then I got back, and then I worked at KWV for seven years as head of global marketing and sales. And then I just thought it's now the time um, when I turned 40 to do my own thing. So then we launched the Friesland Wine brand about uh, close to two years ago, say, say about 20, 20 months ago. Um, and, oh, and it's been real fun. So it's me and my wife, Marilise, and my sister, Marise, who's also a winemaker. Wow, that's awesome. So you have known from young age that you're going to be in the wine industry although you went and studied law right <laughs> yes yeah listen it's in our blood um and the nice thing now is that luckily i could use some of my experience um obviously in contracting internationally and traveling internationally and working with importers and the commercial piece and the legal piece of the business which i think is very very important it's one thing making wine but obviously to develop markets to sell it profitably is something else so yeah i think that stands me in good stead so if I hear you correctly, Friesland is more than a wine. It's also, you know, there's a, it's also part of the history of a, of, a, of a farming enterprise. Can you tell us a little bit more about the history and um, how did you decide on the name yes. Friesland Wines and your brand and everything? 100%. So the big farm is called Groenland. That's one down the road. Um, and that's fourth generation. Um, interesting enough, it comes through, through the lady. So my mom grew up there. My dad came from the Karoo. And then he married my mom, my grandfather passed away, and then my dad sort of bought the farm from his in-laws. Um, and that's where I grew up, and then my dad acquired Friesland, um, which is a 36 hectare uh, farm just up the road uh, in 1999. So, they, so Friesland came to the family, family business a bit later, and it's been farmed um, as two economic units, but by my, uh, by my father and my br brother Pete. And then I said to my dad, yo, before we, we all get too old, why don't we launch our own trademark? And then I launched Friesland, as I say, October 2018. So the vineyard or the farm has always been there, but now I've launched, uh, yeah, I've launched a, a trademark to go with a, with a farm called Friesland. The nice thing is we are all from Dutch stock originally, uh, and Friesland is a province in the northern part of the Netherlands. Um, and the first year comes came from that area in the late 1600s, so there's a nice tie back to our Dutch ancestry way, way, way back. Um, and that's a nice story. Do you use any of the Frischland images? I actually had a Frischland whiskey once, which was quite interesting. <laughs> no, so at the moment, now all the, all the imagery we, we use at the moment is tied back to the farm, um, which is the view on, on, on Table Mountain, Table Bay. There's a little windmill, there's the beautiful vineyards and all that. And then we obviously plan that Dutch, um, Dutch heritage, but at this stage it's quite focused on the farm imagery and not yet the Dutch piece of the yeah, of the visuals. So before you had your own brand, did you basically send your grapes to somebody else? Or did you sell it just to sell your grapes? Yes. Okay, so have you yes, established yes, yes. your own winery now as well with your buildings and everything? Or are you, are you making No, so, not, yeah. mm -hmm. so that's a good question. So um, Groenland with Friesland um, have been, I think, the longest supplied to KWV, Destel, and then uh, quite a few other, other smaller wineries also buy from us, very, very well-known farms. Um, at the moment, we use the, the Groenland wine cellar. They've got a red wine cellar, which is gorgeous. It's a beautiful old cellar built in 1932. We use that for making the red wines of Groenland and Friesland. That's made there. 
We don't have a white wine cellar. So there we've got a little JV with our very good friends, Dari Stater from Kaapzicht next door. And he assists me on the, on the white wine side. Um, so Friesland is a virtual brand. Most of the wines come from Friesland and or Groenland. And then we add in a bit from the Botterey Hills we need it. Okay, that's excellent. So tell us a little bit about um, uh, Friesland itself. You know, I see that you're welcoming guests there. Um, what can a guest experience in visiting you guys? Yeah, so we decided to try and be really modern. And by that, I mean two things. A, our sales strategy is focused around B2C, so direct business to consumer. So we don't really do the retail thing. We sell directly to customers and we work with wine clubs. And uh, when it comes to the experience, it's exactly the same. We decided, obviously it's very expensive as well, but we're not gonna have a big tasting room. Groenland has got a beautiful tasting room down the road, but we've got a tasting deck in the vineyards. So we're focusing more on experiences rather than let's say bricks and mortar. And we've got a tasting deck in the vineyards um, with a gorgeous little uh, aftak lapa thingy. And you can also buy there or have snacks or whatever. And then we welcome guests and corporate groups of say 10, 20, 30, 40 people. And then we do tastings for them in the vineyards. So that's what we do. That's our angle, obviously weather permitting. That's very interesting. I think, um, I mean, we know that the whole world is going from uh, direct to consumer route. Um, so that's a very interesting yes. marketing perspective. Um, did you decide that because of your international sales experience and the way you saw the industry going? I think so, yes. And obviously you can now see with LC19 thing, I think I was lucky enough that it now happened at the right time. But we just thought that's the way to go. I can see that, I mean, even if you look at, at Europe, uh, where it's quite a deflationary type of environment, people can't work through middlemen all the time. And then it's also the high fixed cost when it comes to appointing salespeople and big kickbacks to trade and all that. We just can't afford that. And we just thought it just makes much more sense. And people, I think the youngsters, they are into, into authentic brands and perhaps not all the corporate brands with all respect to them. So our little unique story is to have a Good story to tell and go direct to the consumer. Well, that's very interesting. I just saw online um, that there's a brand in the US, I don't know if you know them, called Empathy Wines. They started 18, yes. 18 months ago and they were sold to Constellation for eight figures in, in dollars. Yo. So, <laughs> yeah, that's so, a big so dream, mate. Eh? They grew, they grew, they grew um, Empathy Wines from nothing. Um, you know, just yeah. label, um, um, with a, with a social, social media influence into a massive brand. And like I said, it was sold to Constellation. So this definitely, I think this whole business to consumer thing in South Africa is still very much in its infancy and it's going to grow. So, um, so. Yes, absolutely. Wife, I can't wife, agree more. And, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, no. Yeah. no. I'm just saying, and then obviously I forgot to mention that what we do as part of that is we do corporate tastings. And people want to see the wine person itself. So I will go to Gauteng or in the Western Cape and I'll do tastings with people. And there's a real tangibility to the brand. And people understand it. They've seen the wine person or the owner or the winemaker. And then they get really loyal. And then it's obviously word of mouth, which is really, really powerful. Well, that is. And that brings us to the important thing is the actual wine. So can you tell us a little bit about the wines that you are making and also um, your winemaking philosophy? Okay. So um, we've got five wines in the range. Um, I'm quite a Bordeaux fan. And I think thinking Stellenbosch, obviously, Cap mm -hmm. and Merlot have to feature. Our Merlots are quite big, um, big and robust. Um, and I thought on the red side, I'm going to start with the Merlot Cabernet. Um, it's about a 51, 49% blend. So our Merlots are really powerful, but they're still very sulky, um, fruit driven, and obviously Cab jabs it for structure. So I love Bordeaux. So I've got a Merlot Cap. And as you know, Merlot is the biggest selling great variety in South Africa. And the ladies also love that. So I think that's a nice sort of unique point because we don't have so many good Merlots in South Africa. And then I've got a Sauvignon Blanc, um, which, is, which is really good. It's, um, it's, it's more of a tropical fruit flavor style, but it's still very dry with a residual sugar of less than three grams. And that's just for really great enjoyment every day. Then we've got two reserve wines. The one is called Brood and Sister, Brother and Sister, Shiraz Grenache. Um, because we also like those big, hearty, sexy, spicy wines. And the Shiraz is the brother in the blend and the Grenache, obviously the more feminine, delicate sister in the blend. And there's me and my sister Marie, a Brun sister. Uh, yeah, it's 85% Shiraz and 15% Grenache. And then we've got a beautiful, lightly wooded Chenin Blanc uh, called Bergen Sia, uh, Mountain and Sea. Obviously, um, honoring our beautiful type of mountain that we look out, out towards and obviously the sea that we can see in the distance. And that's lightly out. 
and that's a straight chain on Blanc. Um, and then we, we have really bottled it, but we're releasing our top flagship, top cabinet called the M-Class, um, named, named after my wife, Marilise. We're gonna launch that October, November this year. And I don't think we, were, we wanna keep our range too big. That's really our plan. Obviously, Butler Ray, Stellenbosch, well known for red variety, so there will always be a strong red wine focus, but then with a the Chenin um, and a Sauvignon Blanc to complement. Oh, that's awesome. So um, it sounds to me like we need to incorporate tasting and also the way your wines are named that you are very much focused on the local market. Is that, is that correct or are you exporting as well? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's a good question. Um, I like the international markets a lot. I mean, obviously you get all the forex advantages and all that in ship FOB and there we go. But I think we all agree, you do need a strong local local footprint, without a doubt. So I'm focusing here. We are uh, doing it town by town and bit by bit. So we're selling quite a lot of wine in Paul and Stellenbosch and the northern suburbs, Pretoria, Johannesburg and so forth. We've got a strong following here. And then I've had some international shipments to, to Scandinavia and Canada and the Middle East and all that. So definitely open for exports. I think that's also where the future lies because the world is so massive. And I'm not sure how the economy is going to stack up in South Africa. But yes, it's very much strong footprint in SA and then rolling out internationally. Oh, very interesting. So, I mean, you've, uh, you've been involved with a bunch of other stuff as well. I've seen on your website, you, you have a thing called Banner Global Wine Solutions, which seems to me is a consultancy business. And then you're also director of a Dutch trading company. Can you tell us more about this? Yeah, sure. So I do four things in one at the moment. So I've got Friesland. Then I work on a contract basis for the Parabat Winery, which I, which I really enjoy because that's a different type of, type of business. They're very big and successful, and that's more Swartland and Paul. Mm -hmm. Then I've got Banner, where I do consultancy, and I do some private label work uh, internationally with some partners. And we're also looking at an interesting project there. And then... Excels is very, is, is very interesting. We are now launching. Uh, we have set up a cooperative in Netherlands. Um, obviously, the Netherlands is a very compliant jurisdiction. And our plan is to help agribusinesses to internationalize themselves. So I don't want to bore you boy with all the details, but the long and the short is if you're a big wine, food, or fruit exporter, and you want substance in, Netherlands, in the Netherlands and have a real legitimate basis there, and you want to tie into preferential data financing, trade financing, capital grants and all that, and our bank accounts internationally, then we can help you set that up. And that's quite well, exciting. That's a very interesting business. And I think one um, for the future. Um, uh, do you guys have a, have a, a, a warehousing in, in um, the Netherlands as well? Or is it just a um, an office? Yes, yeah, so outsource. So what we do is we have got suppliers that will still ship directly to the, uh, say, retailers in Europe or otherwise. And then... Um, and then we will just manage sort of sort of the finance piece in the middle. But yes, we have got a strong logistic partner with warehousing um, set up in the Netherlands. So okay. yeah, it's a bit of both. And you do you do all kinds of of, of um, um, agricultural products. Um, I, yes. I understand fruit and so. What about the things like flowers? Are you involved with that as well? That that as well. We haven't got flowers on board yet, but yes, all all uh, all um, uh, agri goods, even in, innovative things, whether it's pulp or extracts or whatever it may be. So it's everything within the agri space we do. No, that's very interesting. Okay, that's, that's, that's uh, you know, the, all of this has been turned on his head in the last few months or the last this year with the coronavirus, right? Um, I mean, mm -hmm. it's, been, it's been turning the whole world on his head and it's forced all of us to rethink our business models. Have you given any thought or are you coming up with any new ideas in this area because of this? Yes, yes so on the one hand, I think business to consumer is going to be increasingly important. And by that I mean it's a very strong e-commerce solution. So if I was sort of convinced before, I'm now very convinced. So I would strongly advise you need an e-commerce solution. Uh, we sell online direct to consumer. There's no other way to go. I'm not sure how well the on-trade is going to recover or how quickly. Um, retail, yes, retail will always be there, but obviously they're, they're also now under pressure with the lockdown. So you need a very, very strong e-commerce solution. And I still believe there's value to be found in people that's got a strong brand recognition that like the people behind the brand and that pass on the message. And obviously, I don't need to tell you that the margins are also a bit better. Um, obviously, if you go through all these other channels of middlemen, there's not a lot of money left at the end. Um, so the direct way of, of, of going, I think, is the way to go. And this is now just the ideal time for that. So I'm busy with the whole project there. And then, as I say, also to internationalize ourselves through Excelsus or otherwise, and then just build, build a great brand and have... Yeah, I'm trying to have a lot of fun whilst doing it. 
So would you, uh, this is an interesting um, um, concept, would you actually um, expand your direct-to-consumer business to sell directly to consumers in, um, in say, uh, Europe as well, um, from a base in the Netherlands? We're going to try that. That's, yes, that's going to be very that. interesting we're because I think, I think you're going to be one of the few people that actually do that from South Africa, which is, which is actually very exciting. Um, in terms yeah. of your, your direct-to-consumer in South Africa, your logistics, I think that's been um, one of the reasons why, you know, why South African uh, uh, hasn't caught up onto the whole internet craze of buying, you know, Amazon type thing is because of, 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 of maybe a, a logistical problems. So how, how is it going um, so far? Is this improving? Okay, so it used to be good. Obviously, the past uh, month was crazy because mm -hmm. um, we have got a logistic partner in, say, Johannesburg. And what we do is we ship a pallet or two of wine up and it stands in the warehouse and then we have it delivered. Okay. But they are really geared to do business to business, to license seat outlets. And now everyone is now ordering from home and they just couldn't cope with a big, with a big load. So I think in principle, yes, everyone is set up, but no one obviously expected this whole craze to happen now during the month of June when everyone just started ordering. So usually in South Africa, you've got a few options. Either you sell to a wine club and they sell on, or you use a career company directly from your home. That's expensive but it goes quicker. Or thirdly, you've got a warehousing solution where you carry stock in the regions and then you deliver from there. So it'll take you a bit of, you know, a bit of longer time to get it to the consumer, but it'll be more affordable. And unfortunately, career, career charges, sometimes people see that as a barrier to entry. They think it's too expensive, but I still think overall, I think it's, it's still worth your while rather than having to go down to say a supermarket or a restaurant and buy the wines there at an even higher, higher sort of markup. Um, but no one has really figured that out. And obviously, wine is different from other consumer goods. If you go and take a lot for Amazon, it's easy to buy something that's really sort of a consumer item. But wine, people still want to taste the wine, feel it. It's the sort of a tangibility there. So people are getting into wine business e-commerce wise, but I think it's a different way of, you know, of telling a story uh, cons uh, relative to other consumer goods. As I think um, um, I just, just wanted to ask you before um, I ask my next question is um, things like a third party solution like take a lot is that is that a solution or not really? Um, it's hard to judge. I know about brands. I mean, take a lot's a fantastic brand. Make no mistake. I'm not sure how big they are in wine. For for some people it is. For other people they say no. Rather spend your time on your own wine club, sell it door like just online, or go to wine clubs that specialize in wine sales. I think the jury is still out of that one. Well, I, th I think, you know, I, I talked about Empathy Wines and I think the secret was actually exactly what you're saying, brand. The guys managed to build yeah. a brand in a very short time and, and I think that, that wins the game in the direct-to-consumer um, um, business. But um, so on that is how are you going to differentiate your brand from other, because I mean, every, every wine business now is putting up an e-commerce mm. shop and, and trying to go this route. So how are you going to differentiate your brand and, and build your brand in this area? Uh, and that's an excellent question. We said we've got one of two options. Either we try to be unique or we try to be ourselves. And we thought we'd rather be ourselves. So you know there are thousands of wine brands out there. Uh, we can't be 100% unique, that's just impossible. But what we are gonna do is we're gonna try and be focused and disciplined. So we say A, we're a family business. B, we are Stellenbosch. So all our wines are one of origin Stellenbosch. That means that we're not going to compete at different price points in different regions. That's what we do, even if it costs a bit more. And then um, we're going to focus on that, let's say, handcrafted, bespoke storytelling image. Even us, our, our marketing um, on social media, media and uh, otherwise, just focused on that. On just good, honest wines, delivered to your door, one of origin Stellenbosch, sense of place, here's the vineyard, here's the view on Table Mountain, and this is the type of wines that we sell. Hopefully quite a, let's say, a humble, accessible type of approach rather than being too, too big and flashy. I think, I think what you're saying is right, but also, you know, the, the fact that you're going to be yourselves means that, and, and you mentioned the, the, the concept of storytelling and also social media. I think mm -hmm. social media is the perfect um, uh, platform to tell a story. Um, I mean, we've got all the things like YouTube and Facebook and, and you know, all, the, all, the, all those things. Is, so how are you guys actually, are you investing in that, in, in, in getting your, you know, getting your story documented and telling that story? Because I think long term, that story is what builds your brand. Exactly. So what I strongly suggest is that um, if you want to do something, have a strong uh, content plan. You can't just start telling a story. Mm -hmm. So what we do is 
Um, for instance, there are four weeks in a month, and we say every week we do something else. We've got a fan of the month, then a recipe of the month, then a newsworthy event of the month, and then I recorded the video series with my dad. And as I say, unfortunately, he passed away recently. But that's a great seven series um, sort of series where I interviewed him, we talked about Friesland, and every month I'm going to post one of those. So it seems like it's very spontaneous, which it is to an extent. But at the back end, I, th I, I strongly believe that there's got to be strategic planning. And so if you want to tell a story, what is the story? And then how do you tell it? And make sure you, you sort of make it in a very disciplined, focused, strategic journey that you actually take the consumer on, rather than just saying, hey, I'm having a good sip of wine. Do you like my wine? Because that's a bit empty. I mean, everyone can do that. So the story must be very, very intentional. Very, very interesting. I mean, you can see you have international experience and your KWV experience comes comes to mind so that helps so yeah, well listen i must just say it's not easy eh? there are so many wine brands and the one is cheaper than the other it's not easy make no mistake but i believe you can't take over the whole world but there will be enough people that like your wine and then i uh, i suppose that must be good enough for you and for us it is i think i think to win in the direct consumer business it's really that you've got to build brands rather than go for short themselves you know you've got two, yes. people, two concepts you've got the one where you've got a sales funnel, you have a mailing list, you say you have a special, you collect email addresses and then you just keep on selling. But mm. ultimately, I think that's going to lose to somebody who's building a long-term brand that has a story that people start telling to other people. Um, yes. It, it, in the short term, it's, it takes a bit longer, but in the long term, I think that is where we are going to. Because if you think about your, yourself and your, 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 your use of your smartphone, yeah, how many times do you yeah. actually consume content and how many times do you actually look at an ad? I think the world of exactly. advertising is, is gone. It's all about the right content, right? Um, exactly. So, so that's, that's, that's very, very interesting. Um, your wine journey, I mean, it's, it's been quite interesting and, and diverse. What is the most important thing that you've learned? <laughs> Ooh, um, I know it's going to sound cliche, but relationships are really everything. Uh, most of the people that I work with these days are people that I've met along the way and that I got along well, well with and they're still friends and partners in some sort of way, whether it's getting wine from or selling wine to or marketing or working together or imports in the market. So that's critically important. I think in the wine game, it is a feel-good game. When you go to a big wine fair internationally, people are still laughing and toasting and that, and you should never sort of lose that. So yes, it's a business. You need to be uh, commercially astute, you must understand your product costings, the value chain, what it ends up on shelf, what all the the AMP or the marketing stuff and the OPEXs that you need to spend. So you need to understand the numbers, make no mistake. Um, that's one piece, but then as I say, relationships are critically important. If you can get along with people and make decent wine and understand numbers, then I think you've got a winning recipe. It's easier said than done, but I think that's the ideal. Oh, that's awesome. So the brain, I, I need to, I mean, you're in the wine industry, so you have to give us your, either your own wine quote or you can steal one from somebody else, your favorite wine quote. Um, I'm going to say add value. And that means everything. Add value to life. Just be a decent person. Make decent wine. Don't try and, and be difficult or make life difficult for your consumers or try and screw anyone. Just add value. If, you, if, you, if you're a decent person, you sell a decent bottle of wine, you're going to make decent friends and you're going to have a great time. Oh, very, 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 very good quote. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's quite simplistic, but yeah, that's the motto I live by. I, I like it. I like it. Add value. I mean, that's what we try to do in life, right? To everyone we meet. So um, if people want to get hold of you, I mean, you were just saying direct to consumers. So consumers are, are listening. How do they get hold of you, Debray? Yeah, thank you for that, Will. So, um, obviously, our website, www.frieslandwines.com, or they can send an email to me or my wife, uh, mine is the brain, D E B R U I N, at frieslandwines.com, or my wife, Marilise, M A R I L I S E, Marilise at frieslandwines.com. But everything is on our website as well. And obviously, we're on Twitter, Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, and Instagram, and the Freesland Wines. Okay, awesome. So what we'll do is we'll actually put um, uh, uh, we we'll put the, all the links in the description below this um, recording so that people can get that. And um, all that's left for me is to say thank you. Thank you, the brain, for spending the time. I know you've been busy. You're busy, and also, you know, I have to make new plans because of recent events. So thank you very much for spending the time, and appreciate it. 
Thank you. Well, and please come and visit me. When it's, um, when it's spring, I'm, um, we, we are going to sit at the end of Venice and we're going to toast on good times. We're going to have a great glass of wine together in the Stamabosch Venice. Thank you so much. That would be very, that would be great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Cheers. Thanks, Well, I'll talk to you soon. Thank you for supporting our show. If you would like to get more exposure for your business, please have a look at our sponsorship options. Thanks again for supporting About the Winelands. Please follow us on YouTube and on our social media channels. All details and links are in the description.